Inside the CRISPR Story with 60 Minutes producer Nicole Marks. When did CRISPR first catch your interest as a story for 60 Minutes? I was researching a different story. It was about 2014, 2013 or 2014, and I came across something called CRISPR, and I thought, I, I don't know anything about that. What is that? That's interesting. It's uh, technology that can go into the DNA of living things like human, animal, plant, and change the genetic code of that thing. And I looked into it a little bit. I actually went to the Broad Institute in Massachusetts and met with um, some of the folks in our story, Eric Lander and Feng Zhang. Nicole, you happy? Good. And at that point, it was fascinating, but it was kind of early days. And so I thought, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to see what happens. So when I went to this National Academies of Science Gene Editing Summit in 2015, the big part of that discussion was, what if we can do this in humans from the very earliest stages of life? Could you CRISPR an embryo? An embryo, so that then you could change the genetic destiny of that baby. Something that scientists have always, and ethicists have always talked about, but it was not real yet. Last year, some scientists in Oregon published a paper that was the first time that anyone showed with some success that they really could do this. And that's when I thought, okay, now, now it's real. And now it's time to do a 60 minute story. Now it's time to do a 60 minute story. I'm told that one of the big questions is, now that we can do it, should we do it? What's the core of that debate? The question of, if we can do something, should we do it, is a, is a really heated topic. It's scientists are split, ethicists are split on this. I think on the one hand, you have people who say, like our, like our doctors and our scientists in Oregon, who feel very strongly about going ahead with this. One of our doctors, Paula Amato, sees patients. She's an OBGYN. And she sees people who are suffering, who know they're carrying uh, a genetic disease or mutations that could cause disease, and they don't want to pass that on. So for those cases, Dr. Amato feels like she has a moral imperative, she said to us, to continue to do this. On the other hand, you have Eric Lander and you have Feng Zhang at the Broad Institute. And they feel like, you know, we just don't know enough yet. Genes are interconnected. They're like switches. If you change one thing, it's going to turn something else on. If you make the smallest change, even if you think you know exactly what that does, we don't really know what the end result will be. When you edit an embryo, you're permanently changing that DNA. That's then passed on forever and ever and ever in that lineage. So they think that the risks are just too high. But CRISPR is available for purchase online. Yes. For almost anyone. So you can just order CRISPR online? You can. It's simple. It's like Amazon. Just um, like Amazon. Just like Amazon. How do you control how it's used by scientists all over the world? That's amazing. How much does it cost? $65. You have to be a researcher affiliated with an academic institution to get it, but it's, it's easily accessible. It's pretty easy to use. That's what has democratized CRISPR, that it's accessible to people. Um, and I think you'd be hard pressed to find a lab that isn't working with CRISPR these days. Um, so yeah, so the big question becomes, how do you control its use? CRISPR can literally change the world. Yes, yes, CRISPR could literally change the world. Which is, um, you know, exciting but scary. It is scary. I think with a technology like this, and I've worked on stories that are sort of these big tech concepts and movements, I mean, there's oh, with great promise comes great peril. And something that has so much power could be misused. So I think that's why there's a big discussion now about how do we set parameters before things sort of go off the rails. Do you see this as the first of many CRISPR stories at 60 Minutes? I, I think that we will continue to hear about CRISPR in years, in decades probably to come. I really think it's that big of a deal. And we were very careful not to overhype and we waited until I watched this for a while until we felt like it was really the right time. I mean, there are um, entire biomedical firms created around CRISPR 
alone. So I think that this is like the next big thing.